Police officers that were nearby saw what was happening and engaged the two men and shot and killed them there at the scene. The security officer was taken to a nearby hospital where he was treated and later has been released. We're not going to expose ourselves to a bomb that's inside a car. So far as threats, we've been monitoring this for several months. Uh, so far as a credible threat that we had like this event that happened, no. And that was Garland Police Spokesperson Joe Harn after last night's shooting at a Mohammed cartoon drawing contest in Texas. A good place to begin our roundtable on this Monday. And joining us today for this Monday roundtable is criminal defense attorney Michelle Suskauer and Boston criminal defense attorney Jeffrey Nathan. Thank you both for joining us today on this Monday morning, especially you, birthday girl. Happy birthday, Michelle. Thank you very much. I want to spend it at Newsmax, so here yeah, I am. Yeah, there you go. We appreciate yes. it. Free cake and balloons. <laughs> yeah. so I can't wait. Fair enough. Okay, now we just heard that last clip on a more serious note. We heard the police spokesperson say that they had received threats and they were no longer going to expose their team to those possible explosives in the vehicle. An event like this where threats are being received, why post? an unarmed security officer out there. Should they not have kind of, I mean, after what happened at Charlie Hebdo, yes. should they not have taken more precautions at an uh, event like this? You're, you're exactly on target here. They absolutely should have taken more precautions because of course you have to, you cannot look at each uh, event in a vacuum and say, oh, you know, well, that's fine. And, and they have, they're not forward thinking as to what happened in Paris um, especially the nature of what this event was all about. You're, you're asking for issues, and so you must have a plan in place with law enforcement to make sure that it's comprehensive with the city, with, uh, with all of the moving parts in the town, uh, which clearly was not the case. Jeff, what do you say? I'd say it's very easy to defend law enforcement uh, when they're prosecuted for over uh, self-defense, so, so to speak. So in the circumstances were police to be prosecuted, you'd have a really good defense case. All right. Well, let's move on. Also, I want to talk about Baltimore. I wanted to mm -hmm. touch on Texas real quickly mm -hmm. as it's in the news. But former Baltimore Mayor Martin O'Malley, possible presidential candidate, said on Meet the Press over the weekend that if he does run for president, he will launch his campaign in Baltimore. I did not dedicate my life. Baltimore a safer and more just place because it was easy and I am more inclined and more deeply motivated now to address what's wrong with our country and what needs to be healed and what needs to be fixed. Well Michelle last week Martin O'Malley took a lot of criticism because he was really uh, the force behind a lot of these zero tolerance tough on crime policies in the city of Baltimore that his critics now say have backfired. What do you say to that? That he's trying to play both sides. Um, I, you know I, 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 I don't know um, but certainly he's taking advantage of, of all of the, the press and the spotlight on Baltimore. Um, but if he has, if they were his policies talking about being tough on crime right. and mm -hmm. zero and the tolerance, is, uh, and then, you know, yes. It's about the crime statistics in particular, that he was more focused on these statistics than the actual police work that was being done. Jeffrey, if you could follow up from Michelle there, when you see a community that's reliant on police statistics to justify the police work, is that normally something that does not go very well? not going to go well for him and his candidacy if he's going to use the uh, criminality, what happened in Baltimore, the tragedies, the death. Uh, it's not going to <laughs> give him a pump that's going to last for too terribly long, in my opinion. All right. Let's talk about the rest now, if we can, for a minute, about the six officers that now face charges for this. Michelle, we were talking during the break. How unusual is it to see charges like this right away? Very un it's Especially it a false arrest, too. Well, that you know, there, you, you're always worried when there are charges that are so fast um, because you want to make sure whether, you, whether the potential defendant is a police officer or whether it's just your average Joe mm -hmm. Smith, you want to make sure that, that law enforcement is working with, with, uh, with actually in this case, really, they, they weren't. But what you want to make sure that law enforcement mm -hmm. and the prosecuting agency has everything together to make sure that there is fairness on every side. Because this is the case they have to make. And they're bringing the, these charges very, very quickly. And you hope that they have done all the back work so that the charges are going to be proper in this particular case and what I'm worried about is that the charges were brought so quickly and right away you have uh, you, you have uh, um, 
you know, th this this issue with um, is she pandering to the crowd? Um, right. Jeff, with about right. 30 seconds left to go, what do you what do you think? Was she just pandering to the crowd with the announcement of those charges last week? I don't think she's just pandering to the crowd, but I think she's handed the defense an opportunity to say that there was overwhelming rush to judgment and that the facts weren't fully uh, played out before the charges was uh, played out. So you're going to have a good defense case here once again. We've already heard uh, that summing up mm -hmm. from the police union as well. Some more to come <laughs> right. on that. Jeffrey Nathan, Michelle Suskauer, thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks. Both very much for your legal analysis on these matters. Coming up, just a few minutes, President Obama is expected to relaunch his nonprofit organization or his effort called My Brother's keeper. The program first started in 2014 after the death of Trayvon Martin. But what does it mean now after what played out in Baltimore? We're coming right back.